My name is Malcolm Nair with Guided Intelligence, and this is a little bit about my story about my near-death experience. So before my near-death experience, I basically was living an unconscious, subconscious paradigm where I was living from the past, memories of the past, and I really didn't have any guidance or discipline or structure. So I was really living from a sad, emotional, angry state of mind. I was very naive, very ignorant, very angry, very negative, very controlling, abusive, toxic, you just name it. Without sharing too many details of my life story before my car accident, you know, I was into alcohol, drugs, sex, you know, and friends and just all the mindless things to escape reality in life. I didn't know what it was to be aware or conscious. I didn't understand what being peaceful or mindful or loving or forgiving was. Now, fast forward living like that for nearly 20 plus years of my life. I was a runaway junior high dropout, no education, beat up and bullied and tormented and alienated by my family. I had destruction. That's all I had. Both my parents divorced when I was one years old and they both got into other emotional, toxic relationships and it just rubbed off on me. So I basically didn't have an upbringing that was loving, kind, compassionate, respectful, understanding and communicative, right? So it was very belittling. So around the age of 23, I probably already had over 50 to 60 different jobs, different types of jobs in my life that I always lost and got fired or was always aggressive or arguing or fighting with the owner or the manager or you know the regional manager or whatever. So at 23 years old, I wake up in the morning uh, one day, mindless. I'm renting out a basement suite. And the first thing you think it's the weekend, how do you enjoy your day and your night? You know, you want to drink, maybe have fun, see what kind of friends, guys, girls you can hang out with, you know, like kind of searching and looking for acquaintances, not realizing that they were, you know, also like me, non-player characters in this world, living in the matrix, mundane lifestyle, wasting life away. So I wake up and I start to envision my day. And I'm like imagining all these things, but it was all toxic and negative. And I was able to attract exactly my night that I envisioned and attracted. So I wanted drugs and alcohol and party and girls and, you know, like just nonstop, just without getting into details, one of those type of party lives. And it happens. One phone call after another led to, hey, come to my house. And I end up having, I had about 10, I don't know how many grams of mushrooms and, you know, there was cocaine there and alcohol and marijuana. So I ended up, you know, having my bag of mushrooms and I'm like munching on it and, you know, chewing on it. As you can imagine, just a, a pity of a life. So I say, hey, I'm going to leave. This is not that fun. I'm waiting for nothing. I'm waiting around getting all of this, but it's still not good enough for me. And I wanted more. So I ended up saying, you know, where's my keys? Let's get in the car. I get in the car and I, I ended up leaving, right? As soon as I'm driving, I'm getting a little lost and confused at my local city. And I'm starting to forget where I am going. And I start to notice flashing lights, just zipping and flashing by me, not realizing that it was me driving in a residential area over a 100 kilometers an hour. And things start kicking in and I'm just getting dizzy. And I ended up crashing into two cars, blacking out. As I daze back into consciousness, my foot pushes down all the way on the gas. And I end up driving up a yard and I smash into the corner foundation of someone's home and instantaneously eject headfirst out of the vehicle. I am unconscious, but I'm aware in this silence and I notice stillness, no pain, no suffering, but then I can see my body stuck 
crushed in between my waist out of the car, my whole body, my leg was stuck in the car. When they did the investigation, uh, the crazy thing is that the police and the investigators and the homeowners seen my body on the passenger side of the vehicle. They didn't understand how I was able to do that. But it'll make more sense when I tell you about my experience. I was able to come in and out of my body at will. I felt as if my soul needed my body to survive. And I was able to drag myself out of that car and lay unconscious on the passenger side. And that's when my spirit left my body again. So meanwhile, I am just lucid, aware of the ambulance coming, trying to resuscitate me, revive me. And, you know, speaking in ways that I was like shocked that, you know, we're losing too much blood, you know, we're losing him and they just wanted to go. So they strapped me up and they're trying to revive me and everything. And they take me into the ambulance and we're driving on the highway and I'm near my body, but I'm observing and noticing my body. And it made me feel like, what can I do with this information? Like I was observing everything. I can see the lady and I can see the guy and I'm, I'm seeing the driver. And that's not me because I was unconscious and I'm laying there and they're trying to resuscitate me. But me, the I, the, the soul, the spirit was able to leave the ambulance and look at the ambulance driving to the hospital and coming in and looking at my frail body. And I was able to see this and I was the witness of that. So I ended up going to get to the hospital and, you know, here they're telling they don't know what's going on with me. They knew, you know, obviously I broke my leg. I'm puffy everywhere. I've lost so much blood. There's glass, shards of glass in my forehead, in my face, in my neck, in the back of my neck, in my body, everywhere. And they're just shocked, obviously a wreck like that, right? So slowly a few hours goes by and I hear like, you know, phone calls and families and I'm like tuning into this information that I'm able to tune in and I'm able to hear phone calls but it's like far away from me so i was wondering like anybody else about this you know how is it that i can hear and tap into this type of information so as family comes i could just hear like gasping <gasps> oh my god and i can hear their voice and their whispers and their prayers and everyone's coming and they're like one by one guys one by one you know and everyone's just like ready either to wish me well for my death or, you know, for my funeral, they don't know, right? Cause I'm on life support. And there were moments where I had to go in for surgery and I noticed myself, my spirit being able to follow my body into surgery to support me nearby so I can stay well enough. So the fact of the matter is another scenario happened was the breathing tube that was in me was choking my body and my spirit sensed that. And this is where it becomes more real where I can come in and out of my body is my spirit came back into my body, took off my neck brace so I can breathe. So that people were screaming, shocked. My mom was screaming. Nurses didn't know. Doctors didn't know. And my mom was panicking, but nurses and everybody said that maybe he's responding. So what happened was when they all had to decide to either leave me plugged in or, you know, unplug me, there had to be a decision to be made by me, a sacrifice that I really didn't know, but it was like being in the unknowing knowingly. And something kind of gravitated to me and I was getting these senses of I had to go somewhere and make a decision. Right as they come in and my mom's about to make a decision to pull out the uh, plug, my consciousness, my soul leaves outside of the hospital room and starts going and leaving. So my spirit's leaving the hospital room and I end up observing and watching me leave the hospital and I don't know where I'm going. I'm kind of in this feeling of what do I do? But I felt detached. I didn't feel attached to my body. I was able to see that I was just this reflection, this non-player character, I like to say. Now, it makes sense to me now what the Matrix is, but 
I seen everything. Like, it's strange to explain that you are not your body, you're not your mind, you're not your feelings, thoughts, and emotions in the sense of being in the body. You're just this emptiness. You're this, I was something else, I was peace. And I keep going and I end up connecting to a vortex or like some sort of a tunnel or funnel. And I end up getting gravitated up it just kind of takes me unwillingly and I'm just going faster and faster and faster and I'm observing lights and the speed and the frequency, sound waves and thought waves and I'm just going from it further and further. The further and further away I get, I start to notice blackness all around me and I'm getting a little like nervous. And I start to question in my mind, what do I do? And as I'm thinking, is there ever going to be light? I had to surrender and calm down and trust in the process. And all of these subtle words I've been saying have everything to do with being here and how we can turn it all into a practice. But as I'm going and I'm surrendering and I feel detached and not attached at all, and I have to let go of my ego mind and my ego spirit to make a decision to kind of like be in control. So I had to let go of the control that we're so used to. And that's when I start to see light. And I come towards a, a light that's like a warmth. It wasn't even warm, but it was like a glowing light. And... It just surrounded everywhere and I present myself and I stop and I'm like, where am I? You know, before I can get welcomed in or welcomed into the white light, I hear thoughts and feelings and emotions of warmth and compassion and love, empathy and sympathy and respect and honor and appreciation. And like, I felt like I was somewhere I've never been, but this is where I was supposed to be. This is where I come from. And everyone seems so familiar, but I didn't know anybody, but it felt like I knew everybody. It was like my angels were there. And I can't say, yeah, that was my cousin. That was my grandfather. I can't, I don't know. But I did see like these beings in an angelic way, kind of in surrender in the same respect, you know, just kind of present. And I can just hear thoughts, feelings, and emotions of all this, like, you're welcome, you're home now, come. And so I'm observing that, but at the same time, I'm like, but where did I leave from? Where did I come from? Like, and I look back at my life and I'm able to observe my life review. And in that moment, I see it wasn't about how people treated me because I could play victim all day long. Like I have the life experience and all the stories to play victim, but I don't do that anymore. And I was able to see how I left my body and how I left people's emotions and how I was toxic and a and angry and negative and how I used to drink and drive and how I used to use people or take advantage or get help and make promises to people like using people and being all talk my entire life review kind of flashed before my eyes from childhood all the way up to even having my first son you know seeing how I was going to leave you know him and how I was going to turn out and how I turned out, you know, uneducated, illiterate, stupid, a bully, you know, all these things. I just seen like, what did I do? What did I live for? What did I do with my life? And I started to reflect on what I could have done different, what I should have done and what I would have done different and realize that it's too late for all that. I'm done. I left my body and I don't know if I'm crippled, if I'm a vegetable, if I'm going to come back and I'm going to start walking and talking the same. I don't know if I'm paralyzed. I don't know if life's going to be hard, if I'll be able to come back to earth and forgive my mom, dad, my relationships that I had or I'm going to be in it. Like the difficulty of life, the emotions, the density. And if I was told, I probably wouldn't have gone back. But right when I was contemplating all of that and I felt the regrets and I felt the shame and I felt the guilt and I felt the judgment coming out of me. But I wasn't judged being up there. I wasn't being prosecuted. I wasn't being condemned. I was 
being welcomed and it's okay. That was your journey and you know, you're home now. I, I don't know, it felt like I had to beg, but a figure, a huge angelic being lifted its head. Didn't have to say, but I felt, what do you want to do? What are you going to do? So basically, do I want to stay here? I'm home. I'm forgiven. I don't know what's going to happen next. And I didn't know other life reviews and other consciousness. I didn't know anything else except for that experience. And I said, I decide I choose to go back and I want to go back. And a moment went by and I was asked, are you sure? And I took a look and it didn't take too long, but I had to bite the bullet, you know, swallow that pill. And then I ended up saying, I'm sure. And as soon as I said, I'm sure I go back into the white light and into the blackness. And I go back the same way I entered and I'm going, going, going down faster, faster and faster. And I see the atmosphere again and I come in and the clouds and I see the landscape and then I come and I see the hospital and I go, go, go. It, it's like, a, it was like a dream, literally like a dream. But what made it not a dream like, you know, near death experiences, people know about different, different stories and aspects and perspectives. The fact that, you know, what made it real was hearing people's prayers, thoughts. And then when I woke up, I told everybody, you know, things like that. I had to prove it to myself because I felt strange with my experience. But anyways, I end up coming and then into my body and being conscious and aware and my eyes are closed. And that's as soon as that happened, my mom unplugs me. So all of that happened while my mom unplugs me. And then they go sit down, my sister sits down and everyone's just waiting and I could just hear prayers and calmness. And you would think that I remembered everything. When I say that I did not have a heart of gratitude or love, I didn't have faith. So I came back the way I left in this physical realm, like with the same pain, the same victim mindset, the same pain and suffering that I went through, the homelessness, the drugs and alcohol, all the resentment, everything. And I wake up in that pain and suffering and I'm like, lift up my hand, falls down. I can't even move my leg and I look up, I'm like, what the is happening to my leg? I can't move it and I look and I see my mom my sister right there my mom they look at me they're like they're probably thinking oh welcome back oh gosh you know when you burst someone's bubble I was that guy can't you be grateful you made it you're alive you survived right nah I didn't I didn't have none of that it was a journey I tell you a process and I was victim mode and blame mode and I didn't want to see my mom didn't want to see my sister I had so so much packed up resentment. They weren't in my life. There was so much neglect and, and there was so much abandonment issues and trust issues. And there was so much that you see these people now, you're out of the matrix. Now you're the player of the character. Like I can't just dismiss everything. And I, I just wanted to shout and yell and tell and call people out on their fraudulence and shame and tell them the truth and tell everybody where to go and what to do and how to do it. and even doctors and nurses, police officers, judges, everything. I was just more intense. <laughs> I didn't know how to do it in such a calm way, in a constructive way. I didn't know how to teach the lessons and the wisdoms and the guidance at that time. And I had to go through it all and learn the process again, learn how to walk again, learn how to talk properly again. I knew how to talk, but I was losing my voice. It was, I had a lisp. And I was panicking. They didn't know I had bleeding going on in my brain and they were just giving me more pharmaceuticals. And I was looking in, I'm like, so this is the system. They just keep giving me pharmaceuticals. I started to wake up and they were all, I could hear everyone's whispers and I can hear people coming miles away. And I knew who was coming into the hospital and it was crazy. And I knew family members coming in before they came into my room and I, and I was more in tune and I'm like playing, messing around with energies and like, when they would do my blood pressure, I was able to show them how pissed off I am and they're getting scared how I'm raising it so high and I'm like, fine, I'll lower it. So I'm like testing things. I'm healing my bones, healing. People are laughing at me, you know, joking around saying, this, what, who does this guy think? And they're all making a mockery of me in the hospital, in the rehabilitation center. But I proved them all, all wrong. I walked out of that hospital in six days. I healed my lungs in three days. I healed my bones it, less than six months, less than 12 months, everything. I took myself off of all the pharmaceuticals. So there's processes and techniques that I do now 
But all this started happening and in the midst of that happening, me being suppressed on more morphine, Percocet, Oxycodone, I feel shaking in my brain like water, cold water, like I don't know, it was blood. And the doctor's trying to give me more and I panic and I yell at him. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I'm telling you, stop suppressing it. What are you guys doing? And I'm telling him, educating him. He's like, okay, Malcolm, it costs $10,000 a pop to run this. And this is how the system works. And this is what we do. And I'm like, no, no, not with me, buddy. And then they booked me in. They sent me in the same night or the next day. And they find out I have bleeding in my brain. And they said, you know, you have a choice to make. And this is another life or death choice. I said, what? And I was pissed off. I'm like, I just survived this. Weeks go by, almost a month, less than a month and a half. And now you tell me I have to go in for brain surgery. And you're telling me to make a decision, you know, to do this. I'm like, oh man. And I had to really practice what I was learning in this journey of acceptance and understanding and letting go of the ego and don't do so so much mind work and just relax and detach and understand and appreciate and you know it was hard so i end up going in for this surgery and i'm awake the whole time and i feel the drill going in and they couldn't give you any pharmaceuticals they couldn't give you any t4s nothing they're just putting numbness and then three to four hours after the surgery, they cannot give you nothing. So you feel every pain, what it would feel like if you were to literally get drilled in the head and then stay like that for four hours. That kind of pain I had to endure. And I tell you when my spirit left my body after the third hour of dealing with that suffering, then I felt good. I learned how to leave my body again and just kind of go in the hospital, look around and stuff. And then I come back and that's when the nurse was able to say, hey, are you okay? We can give you pharmaceuticals now. And yeah, so that's basically some of my story. And I ended up learning through the journey of self-healing and how to change my patterns, you know, understand my cycles and then pay attention to the patterns I make in life and the outcomes that come from that. I was able to get my criminal record dropped, you know, seven year. I had fines and fees I needed. I had emergency protection order placed against me. I had so many things going on in my life and I had to learn how to manifest and attract differently, how to quantify my experience in life. I had to learn how to transmute energies and transform my life and rewrite my destiny and to quantum jump my 20 years waste of life to 20 years in advance to you know publishing a self-help book for children you know being able to manifest you know attract so many different things and i don't need to go into all that kind of stuff but just shifting your reality changing my personality to learn how to love learn how to forgive learning how to let go of resentment understanding all these emotions and just going through life differently to experience a different life coming from what type of life i came from so that's a bit of my story i appreciate you guys for listening thank you so much and if you want to find out more you can find me on any platform under guided intelligence or malcolm nair thank you